My name is Wilfred Abincha. I'm going to take you through this tutorial. Kindly subscribe, like. I am excited to bring you another tutorial on genomic selection, and we are going to implement it using R. Genomic selection is also called a predictive breeding because it uses markers to predict the phenotype, and then based on those uh, genomic estimated breeding values from the models, you make your selection from there. Uh, it's very efficient and effective because it, in, it increases the rate of genetic gain by addressing three components of the PREDAS equation. That is, it increases selection uh, intensity, increases selection accuracy, and it reduces the time per cycle. So in R, we have uh, packages that are used to develop those models. And uh, we are going to use uh, BGLR, standing for Bayesian Generalized Linear Regression. And uh, we install this package, and then we load it into the library. After that, this package comes with uh, with data from CMIT, and we load this data. After that, we look at this data we have, uh, Y, X, and E. Y is a phenotypic data. X is a marker data, A is a pedigree data. We need those data to develop our models. And we are going to use uh, environment, environment 1 uh, data uh, of this Y phenotype. If we look at the Y, you get that we have four locations of environments. And uh, we are, we, for simplicity, we are going to use only this location 1. And then later we will look on how to uh, construct models using all these environments uh, by looking at more complicated uh, and more complicated uh, model. model. Uh, okay, that's you can see here why is this we have selected column one. Let's run that. And then when running this uh, Bayesian general regression models. First of all, you construct uh, predictors. They're called priors. Before making a model, it's priors that you develop. This We call it this prior ETA. This is how is the first prior. You can choose to use BRR, PL, BSA, BSP, BSC. This BRR is Bayesian rich regression. PL is Bayesian leso. I want to, to run only the these two, the first two. Uh, linear predictors. I develop models using only the two so that we compare these uh, two models. And then you will, on your own time, uh, explore the rest. It's the same procedure. So let's uh, uh, run this the first prior. This x, x this is a marker, a marker data. This is a model we have a rich regression, piece of rich regression. You run that. And then we come here to construct the real. Uh, model. This Y, this is our phenotypic data. ETA, this is our prior. Number of iterations, this is the number of times that the data is going to be sampled and this, uh, we are going to have 1,000 bannings. So we run that. So it's going to, to run, but the speed is going to depend on uh, how strong your computer is. So these priors uh, are first constructed before before making your your real predictions, and this is where you model your you, you put your uh, predictors or factors. If you have a factors, this is where you put them, like G by E factors, and uh, like uh, maybe if. Uh, uh, a location affects that model. That's where you put it. For now, we are going to we are going to use only data uh, from one location. That's why we are not going to have all those things. Can be complicated, but we later after understanding this, then we can go to uh, a G by E uh, modeling. So model has been constructed and as you can see here
So this is our model here, FM. Click here. You can see it has a, uh, it's has, uh, has some, some columns. And uh, the column that is of interest to us is this Y hat, it's Y hat column. This is a predicted values. The values that have been predicted are Y hat. That's why we, we want to see how this model fit, if it's fit for use, we, we check uh, our model FM column Y hat. This is a predicted value. Y hat, this is a predicted value. And why this is the, the the true value the observed that was used to construct the the model. So we see the cor correlation of that uh, of those two uh, columns. This is why it's column Y here, which is uh, Y here, FM column Y and FM Y hat. Uh, y hat. These are predicted. So we see correlation of predicted and observed. We look at that correlation. So you can see the correlation is 0 0.81. This is a, a, a good correlation and this model can be used. So let's run a, a Bayesian laser. Bayesian laser is a lambda. Lambda that is used to, uh, to balance marker effects. So let's run this ETA of Bayesian laser. It's prior. After, after after running the prior, then we come and uh, construct the model. So also it's taking uh, its time and it's going to depend on how, how powerful your machine is. Otherwise, you are going to wait for some minutes. So it's true. Let's also look at the correlation of that. This is 0 0.81. Is similar to the uh, the previous one. So we went to uh, to plots. This is a uh, a plot of uh, predicted and observed phenotypes. So this is a uh, y hat. Y hat is our predicted. So y hat is here. Y hat is our predicted value. And uh, this is our, our maximum and minimum. We are going to consider the maximum uh, a range of uh, value of y and the observed, observed and predicted. Maximum and minimum of uh, y and x. That's why we are going to ask it using, that's why we are going to use it in x limit here and y limit here. Then uh, we use that to construct uh, a plot of observed and uh, predicted here and uh, we can use you can view the estimated marker effects and I want to remind you that these marker effects are Bayesian lasso marker effects and this appear like this because we have uh, uh, squared them to reduce the the negative uh, the negative uh, uh, values but we can also run without the negative values and you see how it is like. This is Bayesian lasso. Let's run the Bayesian rich regression and we see the difference. Bayesian rich regression, we see the difference of this marker effect. Because this is Bayesian lasso, let's see Bayesian uh, rich regression and we see the difference and how these marker effects are different. So after running B, let's look at the marker effects of this uh, Asian rich regression. You see, this is different. This is marker effect Bayesian rich regression. Let's compare with this one. Bayesian lasso. This is a difference you can see. Uh, you can see. So you can see this Bayesian lasso has uh, shrunk into zero because of uh, compared to the rich regression model because of the lambda. Lambda that shrinks 
or, or is which is applied on all these marker effects. You can see some are having high marker effect than uh, others. So that's how we develop the models using Bayesian generalization models. So your work is go and look at these other uh, and compare them, look at their correlations and also look at their marker effects, how they they are and compare. So we want to now to move on how you make a, a model using uh, uh, using the uh, genomic relation matrix and then uh, that uh, using that model to to make your predictions so we have a bit degree uh, uh, bit degree data here which we had here which is a and uh, this bit degree data tells you where these genotypes come from the parents and with the relationship uh, as we know, uh, full SIPs share 0 0.5 of the, the genome, and uh, uh, half SIPs share 0 0.25. But in reality, full SIPs don't share exactly a discrete number like 0 0.5 exactly. It can range from 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 due to Mendelian, Mendelian segregation. Therefore, using a G matrix can be more efficient in in uh, making your prediction to be more uh, more 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 precise and more accurate uh, because you are taking care of Mendelian. So because a, a Bedigree tells us that uh, a Bedigree relationship tells us that half SIPs share 0 0.25 of their genome and the full SIP 0 0.5, which is not true. As I said, full SIP share 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 there, around there because of Mendelian segregation. So we will apply the G genomic relationship matrix, which we also call G matrix. So we scale that uh, the markers. Once you get the, your markers, X, you, you scale them, and then uh, uh, construct your G matrix by uh, cross, running a cross product of these uh, X. That's, uh, you multiply X times the transpose of X, which is x times x transpose, then number of column of x. This is our number of markers. When we do that, we create a G matrix. Uh, we can view a heat map of G matrix and A matrix. You can view it so that we see the difference of a G matrix, which uh, explains Mendelian segregation, and the A matrix, which does not explain the Mendelian uh, secretion, but only express a relationship like uh, full SIPs sharing 0 0.5 of the genome. So this is the G matrix. You can see it, some parts are more darker outside here, meaning that this part uh, uh, are more related than others. If we look at the A matrix, you realize that they are not much darker from outside this diagonal line. See, this is the diagonal line. It's not much darker compared to G matrix. So G matrix explains more uh, relationship among members of a population than A matrix. So we are going to, as we said, predict missing phenotypes. And for us to do that, we are going to use a genomic relation matrix, which is G matrix. And we said there's a difference between G matrix and A matrix, which is kinship matrix. Um, to predict the missing value, we need to have a testing set. And this setting set is going to have individuals that have missing data so that we, we, we phenotype that miss, missing data we, uh, those miss, so that we predict those missing uh, phenotypes using the model that we develop. So let's create this testing data, which is going to have its Y and A, which is just equivalent to our Y. And we are going to use, uh, we are going to use uh, random numbers of 100 random individuals. We are going to be selected. And these 100 random individuals are going to be uh, given the value of NA. That means they are going to have missing uh, phenotype. 
and these seed sets will ensure that when we generate these random individuals and again if we run this we are going to get the same same uh, individuals so that because you know random numbers if we regenerate and again you generate again the two sets are going to be different but if you see set dot seed you're going to get the same same uh, numbers and then if we view this way and a we can view you can see 3881 individuals and a 13302 is NA and other more individual down the list are 100 are having NA which means they have missing value then we develop our priors we are going to use this uh, G matrix and uh, also um, a model is going to be uh, a reproducible kernel helper uh, space we use that then we develop our our model using this Y which is our phenotype is going to be Y and A, which has a missing value, and this is our priors uh, number of iterations is 5,000, and the panning is 1,000, uh, and this means that we are going to run uh, this. This data is going to be sampled 5,000 5, times, and we run. Now, the time it's going to take to run will depend on the strength of your computer, as I said. So after we have created our model now, we can plot a uh, y hat which is predicted against the, the the observed the phenotypes that we had previously. Against the predicted, we third, then we show this the predicted uh, genetic value and this the phenotype that we had. Then we we can show the testing testing set. The red is the testing set. You see it fits well this with this predicted. Lastly, what we can do is to view the predicted FM hearts and the obs observe this is what we used to to make a model. It, it had also missing values. So we use C pine to compare the two to join the two columns. You can see it's here. This is the observed and the predicted. The first column is the predicted and the second column is the observed here. So you can see, uh, let me, let's go to the top. You can see from the top, you see here, this is the predicted and this is the observed. So in this, we had NA values. They have been predicted here with our model. These two NA have been predicted here. And all the 100 NA missing value we had, if you check them, they have been predicted here. And that's how genomic selection works. I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much. Kindly subscribe.